Okay, in the last segment we took a look at a very uh, basic solution to the heat diffusion equation and transient conduction analysis where we just changed the surface temperature conditions for a slab. What we're going to do now, we're going to look at a simplification technique that it takes us actually uh, quite a long ways with many different types of analysis and that's called the lump capacitance method. Okay, so what the lump capacitance method does is it assumes that our object, uh, we're going to change the external condition on the object, and that is by changing the convective heat transfer environment. And what we're assuming is that there are no temperature gradients within the object, and consequently, we're assuming that the entire object is at one temperature and the entire object cools at whatever rate if we're doing a cooling or it could be heating in the case where we put it into a warmer environment. So let's begin with a little schematic and then we're all going to come up with uh, an equation that enables us to characterize what is going on with these approximations. Okay, so what we have is we have some chunk of mass uh, using a technical term. Uh, here is our mass and at time less than zero the temperature of the mass is at temperature Ti. And then what we do is we take that mass and we drop it into a liquid or it could be any other change in convective environment. Here I'm showing it as being going into a liquid. Uh, but essentially what we're doing is we're changing the external convective heat transfer uh, parameter or boundary condition on the object. And with that, assuming that this liquid is at a lower temperature than the initial temperature of the object, so let's assume that, we know that this object with time is going to cool uh, when we put it into this environment. And that's what we're interested in finding out. So uh, let's take a look at how we can come up with an equation that describes what is going on. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a little picture of our object over here. So this is our chunk of mass. We'll bring it over here. And what I'm also going to do is I am going to say that the energy inside of that object, we'll say it's energy storage, but it could be changing with time. And I'm going to put a control surface around that entire object. And remember, we've used control surfaces before and it enables us to quantify any energy transfer going across the surface, the control surface itself. And that will be the basis with which we'll use to come up with our equation. And when we look at this object, where is energy transfer going to be taking place? Well, it's going to be taking place across that boundary and it is going to be leaving the uh, convective heat transfer. So we can then write that E out and I'll put a time rate there, is going to be equal to the convective heat transfer value for that particular object. So with that, what we can do is we can express an energy balance across the control surface. And the energy balance is going to simply be the energy leaving is equal to the change of energy within our chunk of mass. And we know the energy leaving. We said it's leaving via convective heat transfer. So this has a minus sign. So that's going to be minus HA. And it's going to be the temperature of our chunk of material minus the uh, ambient temperature of the liquid, which is T infinity. 
And that is going to be equal to the change in energy within the uh, object itself. And for that, uh, we basically use MC delta T per unit time. So that is going to be the density times the volume. That gives us the mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature per unit time. And so we get that there as being a differential equation. Now, quite often what we do in heat transfer, we want to convert these differential equations into uh, homogeneous ordinary differential equations. And in order to do that, we make a substitution and we will introduce theta. We saw this technique with fins. We went through and introduced a theta value. We quite often do that in heat transfer. Taking the derivative of that, d theta by dt, and the time derivative. Okay, so we get that. Now, that's fine. That's fine. But what about this? dt infinity by dt. Well, what that is, is we have to ask ourselves, is the temperature of the liquid or whatever medium that we're putting it into changing with time? And for lump capacitance, we always assume that it's not. We assume that it's much, much larger and, and capable of storing energy uh, or, or taking energy without changing in temperature. And consequently, we neglect that term there. Uh, and we say that that's zero because the ambient or free stream temperature is not changing. And so with that, what we can do, we can come back to our equation here, making the substitution for theta. Let's rewrite our energy balance. So we get that there. Now AS here, that is the surface area of our object, the wetted surface area. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to rearrange some of the terms in here. And we're going to put this into a form of an equation that we can integrate. Okay, so we get that equation there just by rearranging. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to integrate this equation. And I'm going to apply the limits of integration, what I'm going to integrate between. So I'm integrating in time from 0 to t. Oops, sorry, I forgot a minus there. There should be a minus on that side. I'm integrating from 0 to t, and in that uh, time, at time 0, uh, what we will say is that theta is theta i, and then we're going to some value of theta that we're interested in. So theta i would be with the initial temperature of the material. Theta i would be t i minus t infinity, so that's what theta i is. And what we can do, we can integrate that. d theta over theta is going to be natural logarithm. So let's go ahead and do that. And then the right-hand side is just minus t. And we can now introduce the uh, limits for a natural logarithm. And we end up with the following. So we obtain that. And now I'm going to take an exponential of both sides to get rid of the natural logarithm. And I am going to reintroduce uh, the substitution that we made for theta. And so when I do that, so we obtain that equation there. And this is our solution. This is an equation that tells us the temperature in an object as a function of time under the lump capacitance technique. And so the temperature that we're usually after is right here and typically we will know everything else in this equation. Now one thing that we do, uh, we introduce a thing called the thermal time constant. So I will rewrite the equation in terms of the thermal time constant and I'll call that tau. And so looking back at our solution, it's basically just one over this term here uh, is the thermal time constant. And with that, we can again rewrite our temperature. And so it just makes it a little more compact. Quite often people will write it in terms of a thermal time constant, but it tells you how quickly a system will re uh, respond to a change in, in the input condition, in this case, the uh, convective heat transfer environment. And what we can do, we can plot that. 
as a function of time. And so if we have time, and then on the vertical we put t minus t infinity divided by t i minus t infinity. And we'll start at 1, because if you exponential of 0, that is going to give us 1. So this here is 0. And then what we can do, we can do 1 time constant, 2 time constants. And just quickly plotting this, uh, if you put exponential of minus 1, and you take that, you get 0.368. So we're going to be around here. And then for 2 tau, that would be about 0.135. So you can see that fairly quickly the temperature in this system is going to drop. And so it kind of looked like that. And then asymptotically, it's going to go to 0 as time goes to infinity. So that would be what the response or the temperature would look like if you were to recast it in terms of the time constant instead of putting it for time. So that is the lump capacitance technique and what we're going to do in the next segment is we're going to apply the lump capacitance technique to solve the problem. And so it's kind of a handy quick technique. There are restrictions and we will be looking at those uh, in the next two segments. We'll be talking about the restrictions uh, for the lump capacitance technique. But it enables us to get temperature in an object provided we can assume that the temperature within the object itself uh, spatially is not changing. That, so we assume that it's a constant or lump temperature for the entire object. So that is the lump capacitance method.